Hi, my name is Dr. Christopher Griffin, and I am the horn instructor at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Today I'll be playing for you Villanelle by Paul Ducat. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Christopher Griffin, and I am the horn instructor at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Villanelle by Paul Ducat was a piece written for a performance examination in 1906. And with that, it has a good many challenges, as you would expect. The challenges are both musical and stylistic considerations, but also a few technical demands. The portion of the piece that you will have to play can easily be divided into three distinct sections for your practicing purposes. The opening section is in 6-8 with a dotted quarter note receiving the pulse. And you'll want to think the eighth note subdivision throughout. This will help you in the opening with the two sixteenth note triplets that lead into beat one of the second bar here. Thinking the eighth note pulse will also help you continue on through with musical direction in the lyrical section uh, without dragging and holding back, which is a danger in a, in a, in a slow moving piece. The rhythm of the opening horn call can pose a little bit of a problem when getting started. However, what you'll want to do is remove all aspects of rhythm and tempo and just play those no notes in isolation so that you've got a good, so that you have a good feel for them. Some people use alternate fingerings for those notes, but 
it's actually probably better with the standard fingerings in the end, but you can certainly try uh, various things. You'll want to count all the way through the long held note of the opening call, and when it comes again, really you can treat it simply as an echo. Following the opening calls of the piece, you have what is the most lyrical section of the piece. If you're thinking that eighth note subdivision, it'll help you to keep the tempo moving and not drag behind. Following this opening is the second section of the piece, which goes into 4-4 time. This where the quarter note will be slightly faster than the preceding dotted quarter note. Notice there are a variety of articulation markings. There are tempo fluctuations. There are phrase markings, all of which you should try to adhere to and they give it the character and style that I was talking about. This section you can have a lot of fun with. The tempo fluctuations that you have, actually uh, the one that's most, uh, or the two that are really important to bring out are the ritardando that you have just before the poco rubato and the second line of this 4-4 section. To the degree that you want to stretch those out or elongate those, um, it's kind of up to you. Certainly listen to uh, there are many fine recordings of this piece, and you want to listen to more than just one, two, three. Uh, the, the sky's the limit of recordings that you should listen to, and then decide your own uh, what, on your own what you'd like to do. The final bar, the three-two bar of this section, going into the two-two, you can take a little time with the descending triplets if you like. Not too much, of course. Oftentimes there's a little bit of a pullback before you get to the downbeat of the 2-2 two -two bar. Going on to the second page um, and, and final section of the piece, this part is light, lively, and, and, and can even be felt in two, or you can even feel it in one if you like. There are a few technical passages, a couple of scale passages that you have here that you'll have to run over many times. Uh, lots of repetition in your practice and doing it slowly, of course, at first. The triplet section here is also one that will uh, require a good bit of practicing over and over uh, at a slow tempo and then working your tempo up. But really, these are all very manageable. Again, you have more eighth note passages here, scale-like passages. Now the caution of that is that when you're, is to maintain a good sound throughout that at, at, when going at a rapid speed. Finally, what you have is this descending arpeggio, which uh, is a little tricky and uh, something that covers a vast range, uh, two and a half octaves. And you'll just have to do that numerous times to get accustomed to that. And this last final note that you have, a G down to low C in the bass clef, that might require a little bit of a low horn exercises, which are too much for me to get into now, but you can certainly, there are many low horn exercises that you can find online to, be, to, to get comfortable. And that just that usually is a is a note that's that's relatively new to most high school students. Again, my name is Dr. Christopher Griffin, and uh, the horn instructor at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. It's been my pleasure to to introduce you to Villanelle, and I do hope that you have a, an enjoyable audition experience, and um, try to have fun with the process. Um, make sure you record yourself often as you prepare, and good luck.